is jealous over you, over anything that steals your relationship away from the Father, over anything that would dilute our devotion. He's jealous over that. He wants to get involved. He wants to change things. He wants to give you God's highest and God's best. And he gets enraged at circumstances that prohibit you from fulfilling your destiny. Understand that. Let me repeat that. He gets enraged at circumstances that actually stop you from getting into your destiny. He is not a dove. He is like a dove, but he is not a dove. He lashes out against infirmities and weaknesses and demonic attacks. He wants to strike it over and over and bring it to nothing. He wants to make intercession for us. The thing is, we don't always cooperate because we don't understand what he's like. We think about Jesus and the Holy Spirit, right? And the Holy Spirit just leads Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Like, come for a stroll, Jesus. <laughs> We're just going to go into the wilderness. You'll be fasting for 40 days. There'll be a few tempt, but it'll be fine. He's not like that. Have a look in Mark chapter 1, verse 12. In Mark 1, 12. It says immediately the Holy Spirit drove him out into the wilderness. Like that's aggressive. That's aggressive. And we don't put aggressive with the Holy Spirit anywhere. And because we don't necessarily associate passion with him or aggressive action with him or a violent involvement with him, we're missing out on so much of what he wants to do in our lives. And that word that, you know, he... Um, was in Mark 1 12 he drove him out that's the word ekbalo which we saw in Matthew chapter 10 it's used when they cast out demons and it was used when Jesus prayed and said Lord would you cast out um, harvesters into the harvest field it's the same word cast out throw out like kick them out get them to do something so the Holy Spirit ekbaloed Jesus cast him out um, drove him out sent him out with a violence to face the enemy you understand that sometimes when you are facing the enemy it is because the Holy Spirit has ekbaloed you out there because he is wanting you to take the enemy on so that you can get a victory and you can clear the way for other people You don't understand the attacks that come against you. One can be because of our own stupidity, our iniquities, or it can be that God is wanting you to face something, to bring it down, to destroy it, to open the path up for others. Allow the Holy Spirit to ekbalo you to drive you out, to cast you out, to send you where you need to be. We've got to know both sides of the Holy Spirit, not just the gentle one. He wants to come alongside of you and champion your cause. He wants to do everything for you so it comes in with aggressive action over and above anything that you would ever believe so that he can help you with your infirmities your weaknesses, the demonic attacks that come against us. Have a look in John 14, 16. John 14, 16. This is Jesus speaking. Jesus said, I will ask the Father and he'll give you another comforter, Counselor, helper, intercessor, advocate, strengthener, stand by, that he may remain with you forever. That Holy Spirit's assignment is you. Yes. You are his assignment. He is called alongside of you forever. He, you are his assignment. How amazing is that? The Holy Spirit has been called alongside of you by the Father through Jesus Christ, and you are his assignment. Down in verse 26. The comforter, the counsellor, the helper, the intercessor, the advocate, 
the strengthener, the standby, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father sends in my name and in my place to represent me, to act on my behalf, he will teach you all things. And he will cause you to recall everything I've told you. He'll bring everything back to your remembrance that Jesus told you. So he's going to show you things to come. He's going to bring things back to your remembrance that you need to remember at the right time and in the right way. And in John 15, 26, it says, When the Comforter comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who comes from the Father, he will testify regarding Jesus. He is the spirit of truth. So if you are caught up in a lie anywhere, if there is a place in your life where there is no freedom, where you can't get free, you need the spirit of truth to come alongside and reveal the truth that you need to know so you can be free. He is so powerful. Jesus said, it's better for you that I go away so you can have him. Because he's going to get aggressively involved in your life. He's going to change things. Thing is, salvation is available to everybody, right? That everybody in the whole wide world can have salvation. The only thing they have to do is receive it or say they want it. So we've got this amazing action of the Holy Spirit at work in our lives. But if we are not aware of it, if we don't understand how he works, how can we even say, yeah, I want that? Or if I say, yeah, Holy Spirit, I want you to help me. That's like someone coming along and picking up a tea towel and helping me clean the dishes after dinner. Not that I'd do that, but you know what I mean? It's that kind of a help. We we sort of minimalise what the Holy Spirit does instead of the fact that he gets aggressively involved in your life. So how much room do you make for the Holy Spirit? To become aggressively involved. And is some of the things that he's asked you to do, you haven't done because it seems too out there. But it's him. Because he is violently involved in your life because you are his assignment from God. We need to know the Holy Spirit so when it talks about infirmities and you're going to have homework this weekend or this week he's called alongside of you to walk with you the omnipresence the power of God to encourage, to uplift, to mother you, to inspire you, to uh, enrich you, to improve you, to make you expert at what you do. But he is an enemy to some things. Now, we know he's an enemy to the kingdom of darkness. We know he's an enemy to um, flesh things. But he's an enemy to anything that would keep you average, a nominal Christian, mundane, mediocre, Ordinary, he wars against religious spirits and the status quo. Oh, well, everybody does it, so you know, I'll do the same thing as everybody. He hates that. He comes against numb acceptance the place where we receive an Ishmael instead of the Isaac. The thing is, oh, well, it's almost like what I asked for, so I'll take that instead of realizing you've been offered an Ishmael and you should have waited for your Isaac. He, he, he wars against numb acceptance and almost their experiences. Almost. You know, you pray for something and it's so close you can almost touch it, almost manifest it, almost there. But it never quite, he wars against that because that's not the will of God for your life. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit is amazing. He loves you so deeply and so passionately. So down in um, Romans 8, 27, it says, He searches the hearts of men and knows what's in the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes and pleads before God on behalf of the saints according to and in harmony with God's will. And in verse 26, you know, he makes intercession for us. He meets our, our supplication, pleads on our behalf. Well, that word... Um, intercession we'll look at but he comes against the infirmities our weaknesses Mm -hmm. 
He bears us up in our weaknesses, in our infirmities. Infirmities is a weakness of the flesh. Infirmities can be where you get no result. Like I've just, you know, like no matter how hard I try, no matter what I do, I just can't seem to get the breakthrough. That is an infirmity. An infirmity will keep you placated, pacified and docile. It will tame you. Then the literal meaning of that word infirmities, it actually talks about the demonic spitting on you and demonic whipping. That is the literal translation if you take it back to the original Greek, to the Hebrew, to the Aramaic, to the... It actually talks about that infirmity. It is a demonic spitting, a demonic repeated whipping or a demonic constraint that keeps you forever bowed down. Has anyone ever felt like that? That sometimes no matter what you do, there just seems to be this continual kind of like, I just keep getting whipped or keep getting beaten. Going round the cycle again, the infirmity. We tend to think it's just a sickness and it's just a disease and it's just a weakness. But if you take it back to the original language, it's so much more than that. The whipping talks about a familiarity, you know, like you're close enough to be whipped. You've got to be close to be whipped. So there is a familiarity there with the enemy. Physical whippings, like if, a, if you're getting a demonic whipping and your infirmity is a demonic whipping, it can take the case of a generational disease that just keeps getting repeated in the family. One whipping after another. Whether it's whatever it might be, cancer. I'm trying to think of, and my mind's gone completely blank, but you know what I mean? It's that demonic whipping of disease that just continues to go down. In my, fam in my mother's side, uh, the women can be subject to a disease that they go blind. Um, Praise God, not, not in my family, but my mum, my grandma was blind. My mum had the same thing. Her sisters, I've got nieces with it. It's just only the women, um, but they go blind. So this is a, a whipping of the enemy, right? There's no let up. It's a continual lashing. Come on, guys, you've got to start to wake up to what's going on in the spirit realm so that you can understand how to walk through it in the natural. It can be generational. It can be things like alcoholism, any kind of addiction. It can be terminal illnesses. It can be anything where you're constantly plagued. And I heard somebody say yesterday, you know, when you're continually going around the mountain, cycle after cycle, and you just can't seem to get the breakthrough, don't use the word cycle. It's actually a chain. You're chained in the bondage and you can't get free. But this is what an infirmity is. It's not just a, a sickness or a disease. It's not just a weakness. If you take it back to the original meaning, you go back through the layers of language. This is actually what it talks about. And it talks about a demonic spitting. That actually means that there comes upon... Who's ever felt this? Because I've used to feel it quite often. It's almost like a cloak would come upon you where you think, what's the point of even trying? Nothing ever really changes. A cloak of hopelessness or inevitable, well, this is just the way my life is. It's, I'm really not going to get free of this. That actually is a demonic spitting. Things will never change. Where well, you can't progress. You can't seem to overcome in this one region. It's a heavy weight. It's a yoke of burden that doesn't allow you to stand up to your full height. Who's ever felt burdens that you know there's more in you than what you're actually living. 